You only have to say the underarm incident and every dedicated cricket follower knows exactly what you mean. This divisive incident, which rekindled memories of the animosity aroused by the Bodyline Tour, occurred at the MCG in the third final of the 1981 series. What happened in the final over of that match will live forever in the annals of cricketing battles between Australia and New Zealand. Richard Hadley, and uh, will he be able to perform the miracle New Zealand so badly needs? The Trevor Chapel to the Dean and Hadley. Six balls remaining. He's hit that and he's hit it well. It's going to Max Walker. And that's four! My, what a start! Wow! Oh, 11 required for victory. Five balls to be bowled. Well, I would say that uh, Greg Chappell's got to get Max Walker out of that position. That's Hadley's favourite hitting position. Trevor Chappell. Here we go. Let's have a look at that on replay. Well, Richard Hadley, he wouldn't be over thrilled about that. He's been struggling all season to get an LBW himself. On this occasion, well, I would say that that might have just pitched outside leg stump. Certainly it would have hit the stumps. But uh, I think that Richard Hadley could justifiably feel a little bit annoyed at that decision particularly with all the troubles that he's had getting an lbw himself richard hadley lbw to trevor chapel for four new zealand seven for 225. four balls remaining 11 runs required for victory possibly the best they could hope for would be a draw two fours and a two smith not a big hitter and really it's unfortunate that edgar's not on strike well, I'd have to disagree with Smith not being a big hitter. He I saw him hit an awful big six off Dennis Lilly at the Sydney Cricket Ground. But it's a very tight situation for him. Young cricketer. International uh, experience, not great. He's up against a, a bowler who is also not greatly experienced in international cricket. A lot of pressure out there. Feels from everywhere. He's hit it, he hit it well. Go for two. And they get it. Three wickets in hand. Marsh up for the stumping. Or the run through. He's hit that, and that's Coming. runs. That's at least one. He'll probably go for the second. Test him out. He's going. He's made it. He's home. What a great effort. Ian Smith. Crowd is stunned. Fine running between the wickets. Tremendous courage. They need seven of two balls, and let's look at a tie. Six of two balls for a tie. Seven of two balls for a win to New Zealand. Trevor Chappell, the bowler. Smith, the batsman. 52,000 people in front of their seats. the chapel short of the length to the chapel coming on to bowl the last and vital over put away for four and he's picked up two wickets the chapel slamming that one in short of the length it doesn't bounce very high and that's what's beaten ian smith the fact that it's kept a little bit low and he's hitting across the line looking for the big hit over mid wicket it's gone underneath his bat and just hit out just under halfway up the stumps. Ian Smith is out, bowled Trevor Chapel for four, eight down for 229, and New Zealand's only hope now is a six off the last ball for a tie. discussion well it looks to me as if they're going to bow underarm off the last ball 
Rodmarsh is saying no, mate, but I'm sure he's going to bowl an underarm delivery on the last ball and bowl it along the ground and be sure that it has not been hit for six. The umpires have been told, the batsmen have been told, and this is possibly a little bit disappointing. Let's make sure it is an underarm, but I've got the feeling it's a big ex Victorian skipper. We're going to bowl an underarm. We have believed it. That's a disappointing finish. Disappointed Brian affecting the crowd boom. And it's all over. After 50 overs, New Zealand 8 for 229. Well, that's disappointing. Bruce Edgar saying, what's going on? I'm very disappointed, Bruce Edgar. At the moment, Cow is coming onto the field. No wonder the New Zealanders are disappointed, and none of them more disappointed than their skipper, Geoffrey Howard. There he is now, talking with the two umpires, umpires Cronin and Weezer, and I know exactly the reason he's out there. He's played his cricket over in the United Kingdom with Surrey for a number of years, and the Benson and Hedges domestic competition there is a series of rules designed to make the game flow freely and to avoid incidents such as the one that happened here today. Now there is the relevant rule on page two, and it says that no bowler shall be permitted to bowl underarm. And that's what Geoffrey Howarth is out there talking to them about. It is not in the Australian Benson Hedges World Series Cup rules because the administrators didn't put it in. I hope they put it in by tomorrow morning. Otherwise, uh, there'll be a lot of criticism for what was a disgraceful performance out there today. The other thing is that the reason it all happened, in my opinion, is that the captain got his sums wrong. Now, from over number 42, we were saying in the commentary box that uh, he'd made a nonsense of it and that he was going to be in trouble having Lily bowl the 50th over, which was the ideal thing to do. You must have your best bowler bowl the 50th over. And Lily Marsh and uh, uh, Greg Chappell and Hughes were there counting on their fingers trying to work out who should bowl 46, 7, 8, 9 and 50. As it turned out, the sums were done so badly that Trevor Chappell was left to bowl the 50th over, and that's how it all happened. It was panic stations, and then when uh, McKechnie had to hit a six off the last ball, just to tie, mind you, not to win, just to tie, then the panic became real, and uh, they made certain that New Zealand couldn't tie the match. Well, now, everyone around Australia will have their uh, own ideas on that, and uh, we always get letters and phone calls about different things that happen, so I don't expect anyone to agree with me. Uh, I don't expect uh, that you'll get more than 50% agreement on anything. Let me just tell you what I think about it. I think it was a disgraceful performance from a captain who got his sums wrong today, and I think it should never be permitted to happen again. We keep reading and hearing that the players are under a lot of pressure and that they're tired and jaded and perhaps their judgment and their skill is blunted. Well, uh, perhaps they might advance that as an excuse for what happened out there today. Not with me, they don't. I think it was a very poor performance, one of the worst things I have ever seen done on a cricket field. Good night. This has been another presentation of Nine's Wide World of Sports.